from London, England, it's The Q, covering Discover 2016 London, brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. We're back at Excel London at the, the docks, where it's 27 degrees outside. I feel like I'm back in Boston, but this is HPE Discover, and this is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Dom Wild is here. He's the vice president and general manager of the data center networking group at uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Mark Smith is the senior vice president of sales and business development at Arista, and Richard Haig is the head of delivery enablement at Patty Power Betfair. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Good to Thanks. see you again, Dom. All right, you. thank you. So we've been hearing a lot about the partnership with Arista. Yeah. Um, you guys have been uh, making a lot of noise there. Uh, Andy Bechtelstein was on the stage yesterday right. in a suit. Last yeah, time yeah. I saw him, he was in you know, sort of street clothes, but uh, <laughs> and dresses, a tie. Up, dresses up <laughs> for the European audience. I love it. But, uh, but Dom, set up the sort of where you're at with, with the networking group generally and specifically what's going on with Arista. Yeah, um, so with, with networking, um, we, we've seen a real segmentation in the market, um, really around uh, a set of customers who are, who are looking at sort of more traditional infrastructures um, and need sort of breadth and depth of feature sets and more sort of you know, traditional legacy kind of uh, environments. Um, but the, the real shift that's happening is obviously towards software-defined infrastructure for, for the cloud. And uh, you know, Arista is obviously a leader in that space with you know incredible growth and really impressive growth that you know Mark's been driving. Um, and and our philosophy is really to you know to go and deliver best of breed solutions and open solutions for our customers. Um, and so it's really a sort of natural partnership for us to uh, to partner with Arista to you know to deliver on the, the promise of software defined and and uh, and cloud. Uh, you know, okay. help customers transform. And, and Mark, the nature of the partnership is what? HPE is reselling your system and you've got solutions together to the market? Yeah, they are. I mean, it's a, it's a big partnership for us, right? We've, we've be, been a huge cloud networking company. We've won all the major cloud customers bar one. Um, and uh, now we want to take that same technology, which customers want, through HP to the enterprise. Right, I mean, we're going to come back and talk about how you've competed with, with Cisco. You've, you've done a great job of that and you've crushed it in the cloud service provider space. But before we go there, Richard, set up um, Paddy Power Betfair, what you guys do, what the company's all about. Yep, sure. So Paddy Power Betfair formed from a merger in February this year from Paddy Power and from Betfair, both uh, large online gaming companies, and they've come together to form one of the world, world's largest online gaming companies. So it's a very big, technically driven business. Um, um, and I, this is why, of course, we're interested in some of the custom, some of the uh, uh, bits and pieces. So the nature of that business is a, 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 a lot of data, a lot of analytics you Absolutely, know, beh yeah. behind that, and, uh, and very competitive. Of course, you know, we're in the UK, which you know, is betting central. But, uh, so, so what's the market like for you guys right now? Um, so the market predominantly was in UK Ireland, but is, is growing more and more global. Um, we're pushing out into further regulated markets around the globe. And that brings its own challenges in terms of scaling the infrastructure and keeping pace with the development. Um, it's all very digitally driven. There is a retail segment, but even that we're looking to push more and more through the technology side of it. And that just gives us more and more of a, um, of a challenge in building up and supporting that infrastructure to keep, keep those features and that functionality ever more present. And, and you're a customer of the HPE Arista sort of partnership solution. Talk about, paint a picture of what's the, what the infrastructure is like, but specifically the networking piece. Sure, so we went probably about a year, a year and a half ago, we went out to market looking for the various um, providers that would make up uh, the stack that we would consume. It's a large open stack installation, so we had a lot of freedom to choose the various components to fit together. Um, and through that stack, we ended up choosing, uh, independently of each other at the time, HP and Arista to provide that networking layer and to provide that x86 compute layer. The real driver for us was finding suppliers who offered a rich API and allowed us to programmatically interface with them. So our dream for this new infrastructure was to define everything as code. So we wanted our development community to be able to make changes to the infrastructure exactly as they would to any public cloud provider they might use, but in our own private cloud space. So the real importance of that programmatic API-driven infrastructure was absolutely paramount. So in a sense, Mark, this is kind of a similar, I mean, you guys, like I said before, crushing cloud service providers, this is sort of a, an example where you've got a company that looks like a CSP but is doing their own thing. Describe that a little bit. Well, I think, I think Betfair is, is a lot like many companies, mm -hmm. is they actually are looking at um, building internal clouds 
and eventually they'll probably go to a hybrid cloud model. Um, and they want to resemble what the clouds are doing, which is basically automate, um, provision in an automated way, and run really reliable networks that they can run at scale. So talk a little bit more, Dom, about the, the portfolio and where yeah. Arista fits in. Obviously it's high end, yeah. um, and then I want to understand mm -hmm. how you guys have been so successful competing against Cisco specifically, right. but go ahead. So, um, so the partnership officially kind of got off the ground and, and, and launched um, uh, November 1st. We actually announced back in September, but um, we actually started shipping product November 1st. Um, you know, one of the questions that people have, have asked me is, well, you know, you, you, you had a portfolio, so now, you know, are you replacing something? Um, the, the answer is, you know, back to the segmentation. Uh, we've had our Flex Fabric products for, you know, for many, many years now, and those continue forward, we'll continue to invest there, um, really aligned at sort of that more traditional use, use case. Um, Arista fits in beautifully in the growth segment for software defined and cloud, and you know, we've, we've announced and made a very strong statement that Arista is our preferred partner in that space. Um, and then there's the other segment, which is sort of the, the mega scale sort of service providers um, who are going after this kind of white box model. And we have a, a portfolio called Alto Line uh, of white boxes with some choice of OS there. So, you know, we're, we're looking at that segmentation. I mean, it's not hard and fast. There's gray areas between, you know, between there. Um, but, but really, you know, the, the growth area for the future is, you know, is around cloud, it's around, you know, convergence. Um, so, you know, that, that's where, that's where the, the partnership comes in. We're really excited about it. Our customers are incredibly excited about it. I think you know, Richard and his team are a validation of, of this thinking around um, you know how we're doing this. Uh, you know, I, Richard, you're also using uh, you know uh, the the new Arj, um, uh products as well for network virtualization, OpenStack. Um, you know, these are all things that HPE offers. So you know, Arista, new Arj, OpenStack. These these are all you know the leading solutions and the best of breed solutions that we can bring to bear alongside our sort of server and storage operations. Mark, uh, Jay Sri Ulal was the first to ever explain to me what was happening with, with network traffic, you know, collapsing, going from north-south hierarchical to east-west. Can you describe sort of the mega trends that have been driving momentum in the marketplace? Well, I think, I think that uh, a few things that have been talked about already is open, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of our customers and the cloud providers want an open network, they're tired of being locked into fabrics that where the vendor controls their destiny and they also raise their prices over time and they also, at their whim, get to end of life products, rip them out and replace and, and most companies today, the CIO is looking to cut operational costs and they can't do that with the traditional lock-in of black box mentality. So I think open is a huge trend in what's happening in data center. The second thing is um, people are looking for much a lot more automation. Software defined networking is all about automating standard processes where humans are involved and can cause errors and, and problems. And 60% and of your IT staff or networking team is spent working on problems. By having it automated, I can eliminate human errors, which, is, which are probably I don't know, 90% of the problems that you have in a network are created because somebody creates a wrong network address, they, they type in something wrong, they do a DNS, uh, any, any type of query that they do incorrectly creates outages. And so when I, when I can automate a network, I can eliminate that human factor and I can run a much more reliable network at scale, the way that Betfair is doing. So let's talk about that, Richard. Yep. How much of what Mark said sort of resonates with you and you know, fed into the decision for you guys to go with uh, yeah, uh, HP and Arista? he's spot on. So one of the big drivers is, can we go faster? Um, our CEO is famous for saying, great, good solution. If I gave you more money, could you do it more quickly? And being able to automate that network layer and be able to um, immutably deploy that network layer certainly helps us do that. So it's spot on as well about the number of errors. So when you look at things like large east-west firewall rule sets as they build up over five, 10 years of, of the history of a business, you end up with these huge monolithic rule sets that are very difficult to understand. And you might want to make a simple change for a new product that's coming online and it has a knock-on consequence that gives you an outage and you really have to spend a lot of time discovering why. Because we've been able to take the, the network and make it software defined, and because we've been able to put it into an immutable model, so rather than building on top of the rule set that is there all the time, we blow away a subnet, we blow away the AC rules for that app, and we build them from scratch every time. 
we end up with a much more segmented way of putting all these rule sets in place and all of these apps interacting. And each independent, uh, independent application owner has a very good understanding of, of the rules and the networking around their specific app, rather than having to pin back to a central networking team who finds it impossible to keep it all in their head about all of this. And happens. you're saying they can start with a clean slate pretty much every time they want to roll out a new project or a new app or Absolutely, new um, and because it's all defined as code as well, our development community, this is the language, this is how they speak. So rather than having to interact with various GUIs or various products or portals, we now allow them to check in a YAML code defining their intent for the network or for the um, firewall ruling surrounding their application. That's checked in and it goes through the same source controlled testing pipeline behavior that all of the rest of our code does the outcome just happens to be infrastructure. So it really has sped up our ability um, to provide that infrastructure, but also given massive flexibility to the development teams about how they consume it. I mean, you're describing you know, what people refer to as the DevOps you know, environment, Absolutely more not. so than Ops dev, in other words, sort of force fitting your operations people into yep. a development role. Is that true? Or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my guiding kind of light was I want to make this so easy that they don't want to use AWS because this is easier. And so we're really trying to provide it dev centric so that it's everything that the devs want to do. We provide them a way to do that under their own control. The flip side of this as well is we get fantastic feedback from our security audit guys because now everything is as code and source controlled and historically evident. So for the guys doing audits, they have absolute granularity over everything that has been changed and the version of those changes going all the way back to the start. So we've, we've got a very happy development community who is able to have a, a fast interactive approach to, to their infrastructure, a very happy security entity who has absolute visibility over everything that's happened. So it's a real, a real win-win across Can those. Can you paint a, even, you know, a deeper, broader picture of your networking inf infrastructure? What's you know, what's it look like under the covers? Sure, so the, the biggest change we've made is we've gone from a core networking topology to SpineLeaf, um, and that SpineLeaf has allowed us to have much lower latency across the network design. So we're two hops minimum away from just about anything. Put that into context, we've had some applications that before had to spend some time performance tuning after they'd had their first cut. We've moved them from that core networking into that spine leaf, and they've gone, in some cases, an order of magnitude faster, purely based on that networking topology. So that was a big change for us. It also allows us to much more easily scale up horizontally. We can just add more spine layers and then build those up with the leaves going forward. Who do you call when something goes wrong? Haha. <laughs> Um, do you know what all of the vendors we have, we, we have um, we've got a list that I'm calling the reference stack and we've done this with OpenStack in mind because that's the core of the project we've done. Each of those vendors were chosen not only for their technical capabilities and the feature sets, but the culture of the teams and their ability to want to be pushed because a lot of the things we were asking them to do maybe were a little beyond what a more traditional um, IT infrastructure organization would have asked. So who do I call? I, I tend to reach out to all of them depending on the problem. So it might be direct to Arista for an issue. Um, it, it might be directly through Red Hat, our partners on the OpenStack side. But also all of them have a very good understanding between them that um, if it's one of these partners' problems, it's all of our problems. And we found a couple of times where we've had multiple partners swarm together to try and help us understand what the issue is and fix it. And, and so far it's proved very, very useful. And is that how you guys generally talk to your customers? We call any of us and well, we'll, we'll I, figure it out? Or do you try to have a single point of contact? Or? Well, well, I think the, 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 the opportunity we have now with, you know, with this partnership is you know, for customers you know, like Richard, we can now deliver the option of having our you know, HPE consulting and support services be the central point of contact. That's one of the big value propositions that we, we're going to bring to the table here is rolling out an entire slew of services that include Arista, you know, include our, our compute and storage and, and virtualization solutions so that we can actually reduce the number of those, you know, that list of, of, of numbers that you know, a customer has to retain, we can reduce that and, and be almost a single point of, uh, of contact. So you know, as we move forward, um, you know, we want to really sort of drive that as, a, as one of the leading benefits of this partnership. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal you know, when you're competing against the incumbents who have large organizations for us. Arista is still a startup. We're still you know, a growing company even though we've hit a billion in revenue. Um, the, we don't have the consulting resources that HP does, so, it, so, so or HPE, and, and so I've spent a lot of my time this week here at Discover with the consulting services team. I've got a few more meetings um, today and tomorrow, and it's all about being able to deliver that total solution through HPE with the best technology and networking along with compute and storage. And so, it's a great story. And, and, and your guys are comped the, sort of the same way they would be in any channel, is that right? So. Yep, absolutely. Um, so we figured that out early on. I think Dominic was uh, key to making sure that we made it completely neutral for them. 
And our, our sales team is embracing the HPE team like crazy. I mean, I'm on calls almost every day where we're organizing, getting the teams together and talking about which accounts do we go attack next. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting, right? I mean, Cisco is such an entrenched competitor. You know, you've got the you know, Cisco trained engineers and so forth. And, Arista's proven you know, consistently that you can compete you know, in, your, in your areas, a billion versus you know, a much larger company. And Dom, you guys are evolving your networking strategy considerably. I mean, obviously the 3Com was a sort of a nice alternative, but now with Aruba and the Arista partnership, do you feel like that portfolio is kind of where you want it to really sort of attack the leader? Yeah, I mean, we're really set up for the, for the next sort of decade of evolutions and, and transformations that are going to happen in networking. I mean, you know, the, the Aruba acquisition was huge for us. I mean, it, it, you know, it, that, that brought us the mobility capability, the mobility solutions that are really driving, you know, everything that's happening in technology today because everything is mobile. Um, and so that became, a, you know, a very, very strong foundation. Um, and you know, and, and we've been working on this this partnership with the rest of you know for some time because you know the, the the evolution on the data center side of everything becoming cloud native and cloud enabled and and, and everybody driving towards a secure hybrid cloud model. You know, we needed a sort of partnership with the best of breed solution there while still continuing to serve and service our existing customer base and those, those enterprises who are, are perhaps not ready yet and, and are, are want to stay on the sort of more traditional path. So, you know, we, we have the sort of multiple aspects of the portfolio. And as I said earlier, we're going to continue to invest there. Um, but, you know, the, the market growth is, is towards that sort of, you know, cloud and software defines. So it's really important for us to have a strong partnership here to, to drive that transformation forward for customers. All right, Richard, we're out of time, but I'll close with a customer perspective. Vibe on the show at, uh, at Discover, what's, it's, uh, what's it like for you? The vibe is good. It's also absolutely enormous. It's a huge building, this, and it's absolutely packed, so it's, it's looking like a great show so far. It's good, a little clapping on behind us. So well, thanks very much, gentlemen, for coming thanks. to theCUBE. Really appreciate your time. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE Live from HPE Discover and London Excel. Right back. <laughs>